It's common for indigenous cultures to value thinking and sensing as two complementary parts of a whole. Western culture, which spread to the United States through colonization of indigenous peoples, is rooted in very different values that leave feelings out of the domain of knowledge. In higher education, a Western cultural construction, professors and students enter a classroom and are expected to check their emotions at the door to teach and learn. But that's not the way the human brain works. The work of neuroscientists Mary Helen Imordino Yang and Antonio Damasio has shown that emotions are not just messy toddlers in a china shop running around, breaking and obscuring delicate cognitive glassware. Instead, they're more like the shelves underlying the glassware. Without them, cognition has less support. The reality is that emotions are not just part of learning. They are the ground floor of learning. And when a person isn't in a positive emotional state, they aren't able to perform to their full intellectual ability. Under stress, changes happen in the brain that derail a person's ability to focus. This flight or fright response, often referred to as an amygdala takeover, is the same physiological process a person would experience if confronted by a lion. A person's emotional state is influenced by cues they pick up from their environment. Positive cues of social connection, validation, hope, and reward prime a person for engagement. Negative threatening cues of social isolation, fear of conforming to stereotypes, rejection, and distrust are stressors that block a person's ability to perform to their fullest potential. To design inclusive learning environments that support the success of more students, we need more of these and less of these.